We have a go for main engine start. Mission and liftoff of the Scuff Star, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. The uh, solid rocket boosters uh, are all away. Columbia Houston, UHF Conch. During the early days of the Space Shuttle program, many of the flights had similar directives. By 1985, there were four orbiters in use, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, and Atlantis. There were a few noteworthy missions in these days. STS-2, Columbia's second flight, tested the Canadarm robotic arm for the first time, which would later become essential for the construction and maintenance of the International Space Station. STS-6, the first flight of Challenger, would see the first extravehicular activity outside the shuttle. Story Musgrave and Don Peterson spent just over four hours in the orbiter's payload bay and performed various tests. STS-7 saw the first American woman in space, Sally Ride. This to me is simply disappointing, as the first woman overall to travel in space was Valentina Tereshkova in 1963. STS-8, feeling similarly late to the game, was the first flight of an African-American in space, Guillaume Bluford. STS-9 was the first Space Lab mission, a reusable laboratory developed by ESA that could fit into the shuttle's cargo bay. The design of this module would later inspire the multi-purpose logistic modules used to transfer payloads to the International Space Station. STS-41B had the first untethered spacewalk by Bruce McCandless using a manned maneuvering unit. This EVA would produce one of the most famous astronaut images of all time, showing McCandless seemingly sitting comfortably as he floats in space. Basically, <clears throat> we were very pleased with the way the uh, MMU handled. It was uh, very much like the simulations at the Martin Company in Denver. Uh, here I am, I guess, uh, backing out. Uh, to 150 feet and coming back in and then uh, out to 300 and coming back in. Uh, this is approximately the same sort of translation that the folks on the next mission, the Solar Maximum Repair Mission, will be faced with in moving from the orbiter over to the Solar Maximum spacecraft. Unfortunately, I have to admit, there isn't much else to say about many of these early missions. Satellites were deployed, sometimes classified by the Department of Defense, a few sitting politicians went to space, and Space Lab was toyed with some more. These could perhaps be seen as the glory days of the shuttle program. Every mission went almost perfectly according to plan. One flight had some excessive damage to the thermal protection system. One flight had a faulty temperature sensor that resulted in an engine shutdown and therefore a lower orbit than intended, but both missions' goals were still achieved. Let's just take a moment and enjoy some of the outstanding video footage that came out of these early missions, shall we? of the INSAT uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft. You can see that the deploy went very smoothly. At the moment of deploy, there was a large thump, and uh, as I said, the uh, spacecraft was deployed very smoothly, and uh, there was no vibrations or no uh, precession of the satellite as it left the uh, payload bay. And here's a shot with gravel fixture too. A lot of the tests were putting the arm and the PFTA up in various configurations and then putting pulses into the orbiter or into the arm and seeing what the relative motions were between the two. So while we were doing that, of course, we got some fantastic views of the Earth uh, down below and uh, had the cameras always at the ready to, uh, to get good pictures. This is 16 millimeter photography taken by Dale of the front windows. Again, you can see the glow, which now is uh, orange in color and as we described uh, before these
these are the pulses taken by Dale by holding a camera and looking aft and above his head, above the tail. I think it's good to remember these days, when the shuttle program was being treated properly. These were good times for space exploration, until disaster would strike in 1986. But we'll talk about that next time. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. If you want to support me further, Consider donating on Patreon or purchasing some of my work through Amazon or Teespring. Thank you, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. Live there. On the mode of dust. Suspended. In a sunbeam. In a vast cosmic arena.